Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us here in uh, Fotografiska. I'm very glad. I'm Florian Bougou. I'm Art Director for Europe at Taquette. Um, and I will be presenting to you first today some inspiration, uh, some trends, as we call them. I, I don't like that word personally that much. I prefer to say about ways of looking at things, in general speaking, because um, this, is, this is the way we work at Taquette for design. We are not just only looking at what's going on there or there. It's, it's a matter of looking at many, many things. Um, and that helps us, of course, develop all kinds of materials. Um, here you're looking at some vinyl tiles, and we'll come back to ID Mix a little bit later. But also that also is uh, about carpets and rugs, um, wood, um, also some vinyl rolls. It could be also some, um, some interesting laminate stories and linoleum, all this. So it's very, very large. And so I would like to share with you a bit of views of these ways of looking at things for 2018 and, and, and 19. Um, so what's interesting is that when we say looking forward, or it's not just ahead, it's also in the back. Where are we coming from? What's happening on the sides? Um, it's about also looking at fashion. It could be um, uh, language, how people are using things. And uh, uh, it's interesting to see, for example, one story about you know, how we shop or how we go for things. And uh, you can see there's been a tremendous evolution between like the local shop where you would know who manufactured what to something that was totally anonymous. And if you want to shop for cereals, for example, today it's just a Nile or an avenue of cotton boxes with bright colors and Disney cartoons on top of them. So it's, you know, it's been a, quite a, an evolution. And, and it's actually you know, evolved a bit further. And what's interesting, this very year is the first time ever that a retail company that's not traditional is first in market value. And this, this company is called Amazon. So this first year, they, they went up before uh, Walmart. So this is really interesting, what's happening today, in terms of what is our relationship to others of course, retail, distribution, buying, shopping is a very, you know, uh, extremely uh, uh, interesting thing to look at. But what about, you know, the other people, uh, the new generation, and we call them the millennials, and you know the story, of course. Um, and the major thing that they haven't experienced in their lives is they haven't experienced this craziness of the consumption era, like owning, owning, owning. They don't know that. They, they don't have that in their mind. They also have the social media, of course. So what they're interested in is definitely about experience. And that is not new to you, I, I, I'm, I'm totally sure. Uh, but it's really influential these days. And for example, if you look at some nice places, and here in the back, this is um, the um, WeWork new Lafayette in downtown Paris. The WeWork is, the, is a brand there renting uh, office spaces. And you can see here that it has nothing to do with an office space, basically. And rather than just renting a space, it's more like getting into a community of businesses, trying to, to kind of discuss and try to cooperate, collaborate together. So here we see this social network story coming in. Um, on the other side here, you know the Mama Shelter brand, I guess, and this is an example of Istanbul. What's interesting here as well is for hotels. Um, it's very interesting, like the way that you eat, you, the, the serve food is different because it's like a big plate, like you would be at home and you serve yourself. And if you want to pick up an instrument, a music instrument that you can play and jig with your friends. So again, that social story, that, that, that is really coming very strong. So, being rather than having, um, and I guess in the, in the background is like being bold, being, you know, identity is very, ex extremely important. You're very, you're posting what you're living, you're posting what you're experiencing. So, it's this boldness, we're going to find it in the, in the trends in, the, in a few minutes. So, how does that translate? So, here we have four trends. Let me say that I would we could call them also currents, because those four trends, like Oh Happy Days, New Folk, Subrouting Season, and Soft Silence, they're part of four currents that we see every year. There's one that's about you know, energy, and it's about you know, youth, and it's about 
you know, bright colors. The, the second is more about the vintage style, the reuse, and that kind of thing. Then there's always something about nature, uh, respect of nature. And finally, there's always something about the classic. What's interesting this year is that to look at how these currents, we see them evolving. And again, we're going to see that they're evolving in a very bold way. Um, let's, let's, let's have a look um, in the first one. So the first one is uh, Oh Happy Days. Yeah, very nice palettes here. Um, what you can first see from the palettes, because I always start with the colors, it's not a primary color palette. Uh, that's what we had in the past. And you know, if you remember this, these bright blues and bright greens, and we had that for years and years and years, I remember that. Uh, and um, this is really more, um, I would say, sophisticated colors. Um, and you can see for that, for example, this solar yellow, this kind of reddish orange, pinkish orange. Um, there's this blue that's tinted of, of little green there. It's, they're quite sophisticated and, and they are soft. Rather than being totally primary, they are soft. So they are engaging, they're welcoming. So it could be energizing together as being energizing. So it's more like smart colors rather than just primary colors. And you can see that also in uh, you know, internal design and architecture. And just want to show you this picture. It's uh, how design agency in uh, Taiwan who made you know, this kind of playful apartment very interesting. And what I love in this, besides, you know, there's this slate here, um, but I, I really love this NO Studio um, um, uh, fixtures, like, you know, uh, lights, spinning lights. I don't know if you know them. They've been there for some time now, but I think that the way they, their presence here is make, totally makes sense. These, um, these lamps, you can actually put some items from that of your own, and they actually, you know, personalize the, the lighting. And the name of the lights is Favorite Things. Again, this notion of identity, of putting yourself in a st sort of a stage, is very present. And that also is true with architecture. Believe it or not, here uh, on this, this is a, a business hotel in Berlin. Uh, and would you believe that a business hotel wouldn't look like that? I mean, you would expect it to be more like white and gray. And again, if you think about what I talked about with the WeWork story. And there, there we are. I mean, there's a lot of things going on like this. Another thing that's very important that, that we see in the trends today um, is the importance of the Memphis movement uh, that was initiated by Etoy Sotsas mainly. Um, he worked from the like, 60s, 70s, 80s. And in, 80, in the early 80s, this Memphis movement was very strong. Uh, I'm sure that you recognize some of these patterns here and um, what's interesting, again, it looks very bold and it's very interesting, but it's very much studied, like the balance, how you play with color, the surface that you use, how you're going to mix the graphics. This is extremely precise so that the balance is right. And again, we're talking about smart. This is, this is not just like playful and, hey, this is, this is something very sophisticated, I think, and bold. A few examples of how that turns out with some of our materials that um, you might know already or you're discovering here. Um, this is uh, what we call a pocket noble Manhattan. Uh, the characteristics of this parquet is that we've cut, you know, the, the, the woods in 10 by 10, you know, squares and we've alternate, you know, the, 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 the food grain and it produces that very playful, again, uh, story, but then again, sophisticated and subtle. This is not plain. Um, and so it goes very together well with this little store here that, um, that you can see. Another example of this ash that, that is um, very, you know, kind of whitened, like linen whitened, and it works very well, you know, playing very well with the colors on the wall here. Um, another example, this is vinyl roll. Uh, from uh, our collection, and you see here the blue that we saw in the palette, obviously. And, um, well, it's a bit retro, yes, but it's very joyful. Uh, again, our work as designers is to make things evolve from history, looking back, but projecting in the future. So this is typically what we did here. Um, okay, let's move forward with uh, another ways of looking at things. And this is New Folk. Um, 
What I love about this palette is it's very sensual, very sensorial. Um, as you know, I mean, the, the picture speaks for itself, and and you'll find that also in the, some colors of the mixonomy. I'll explain to you that later. But what what's here, intent, the intention behind it is is about travel. It's about cultures from elsewhere, and the way we imagine those colors is about scent. It's about odor. It's about leather, it's about musk, something that's very sensorial again. And um, this tells about the travel that we do all around the world and we bring back home. This is, this is the story of this trend here. And um, I like this picture of um, le magasin, uh, Gen le comptoir, sorry, le comptoir général. It's a, it's a restaurant, as you might notice. Uh, it's a bit of bric-a-brac, like a mix of antiques and uh, and uh, repaired uh, things that they find in the streets. Uh, it's very mixed, and uh, it's, of course, very much welcoming. Um, it's unconventional as well. You know, it's bold, and we said that many times. Um, quite randomly, uh, uh, let's say, uh, composed. A bit overwhelming, there's a lot of redundancy, and that's, that's interesting. Um, but then there was a lot of souvenirs here. Um, it's like you're getting into someone else's home, or it could be your home as well. It's really very, you know, in inclusive. And that we'll find also in some other stories, and here you see a very nice way of playing with the palette on painting on wood or mixing some things here. What I love the most here are these compositions of overlapping graphics. Um, and these are graphics that are not strange to anybody. They are really um, um, some... Um, uh, traditional, but then revived with colors, like you were talking about um, the wax, very well-known African textile, the ACAT, traditional Asian uh, textiles as well. And by opal overlapping them, it's, again, very overwhelming. And this is typical of what we just saw with the uh, Comptoir General. It's very, very close to that. And um, what's interesting is what you see on the l l um, right side, sorry. Um, this is the, the Kenzo branding as right now, and their, their new stores, their, their campaign is all about this. And again, this is not random, this is really sophisticated, it's not about you know, just like doing anything. It's really studied, uh, it's very sophisticated and bold, again. Um, let's have a look at you know, our material. So here we have the, this parquet again, it's, uh, it's noble, it's um, what called waza, it's, it's very sophisticated as well. It's uh, playful. It has this um, uh, very earthy tone. A lot of graphic content in it. Obviously, well, there's a tribute here to the cementals. Um, what I love about it, and uh, well, the colors are very good here, I must admit, but then they're even better in reality. Uh, that the, the choice of this ochre, kind of reddish ochre, to mix together with the blue-green together on this is really interesting. It really works. This is really new. Honeycomb, yeah. That's, uh, that's his vinyl roll again. And this is very typical. So again, it's a matter of, you know, how do you reinterpret the tradition? How do you make it not alive and accessible for people? Okay, so um, another current, um, celebrating seasons. This is typically the one that talks about nature. Uh, I don't know if you recall in the past years how we were talking about this. Uh, the story was that, let's be zen, minimalist, tones of grace. I could stop there, just like, you know, one, one stone there on the floor, and that's pretty much it. Um, there is, I mean, we're a changing world. Again, we are very, very, very bold. Um, um, it's basically about nature that wants to take it back. Um, it's about, you know, nature coming in, invading us, so to speak. Uh, and it's very sensorial again. Um, and um, I really like that picture of this um, greenhouse here. And, like, it's really about, you know, nature coming in, in, into the house. This is very symbolic. Um, and um, it's being not shy and not afraid of a nature experience. Some example here of how this has been interpreted. I'm sure that you've seen some of those pictures already, but especially this one, I've seen some else. I really love those murals wallpaper over there, uh, which is like a, basically a wallpaper, uh, and the, their specialty is about you know, describing what nature could be. And 
it's really interesting how they play with colors and how they have this uh, slowly uh, coming into their house as well. Um, whoops. So something really interesting as well, I was talking about being bold. If you remember the greens, they were kind of you know, loud down. And here you see that it's really a bold green. It's luxurious. It's almost, you know, Amazonia. Uh, it's, it's, it's really invading. It's really coming in. And I really love, for example, some wallpapers, examples here. And on the right side here, this, this boy is not sitting uh, outside. This, this is an actual rug, a uh, rug from Alexandra Caillouglou. And she, she called it landscape. And it's really interesting how you see that, you know, they, and she's, she's produced of several of them, um, how that, um, that goes. So it's a, it's a real rug. It's not like real grass, it's rug. Um, again, illustration of how, you know, this nature comes in, and it's about also getting some examples, some samples of outside and bringing it inside. Um, I'm going to just conclude on this. Uh, on, I don't know if you heard about the movie called Demain or Tomorrow. It's a French actress. She's called Melanie Nohon. And they, basically what they did they, they, with um, her, her friends, they, they decided, let's, let's go outside and see what people are finding as solutions to preserve nature and make it our own again. And this is really uh, um, a testimony of what, where we want to go. And I think this, this movement is growing, growing, growing. And not just about contemplation, but more about inclusiveness. Um, examples. So this parquet here, um, it's chalk white color. It's an oak. And you see how it plays in this picture with the colors of outside, inside outside story. Here we have this very earthy, almost like, you know, smell the bark of the tree, I would say, with this example here of this um, oak, old brown, we call it. Uh, and again, you know, this, this, the scenography tells a lot about, you know, this nature that comes in. We see very clearly what's happening outside. And, well, we've seen that already once, this noble Manhattan. I, I really love that one. I'll come back to that. But. Uh, and there again is the, the subtlety of how that composition of wood plays with the natural light. And this is really interesting. It makes it also natural, even though it's graphic. It's really interesting. Another example here, this, this is more the color that, that you know, totally goes together well with uh, the green walls and uh, even like with the, um, this green uh, uh, glass uh, ball here. Um, let's move on to the last one. This is called Soft Silence. And this Soft Silence is the classic. Um, and so I'm just a few words like, you know, designers, we're kind of schizophrenic. Um, at, at least at Target, we are, um, uh, because we need to think for many people, many countries. And of course, when we need to think about something that should be classic, we, we, can't, we can't think that classic should be boring, right? Uh, and, um, well, not that it's been boring in the past, but let's say that the past was really about uniformity of these grays and taupe colors, remember that. Now again, what we see here with this palette is that we're moving to something that's much bolder, much more sophisticated, sophisticated and luxury. And um, yeah, um, some examples of um, what we're talking about is this, you can see here, this, the sophistication of this color palette. Um, and this kind of aesthetic, I don't know if I'm, my word is good, but aesthetic, aesthetic, like you know, the one that likes the story of aesthetics, the sophistication of it. This is really what, what comes in into this way of looking at classics. And uh, I personally love these pictures here. So you see how it is to mix the stone and the, and the metal. I personally love this um, example of ceramic tiles. And what I love about it is this mix of cool and warm neutrals. So. Neutrals don't have to be boring again. They can be very interesting. And you'll see that when you play with mixonomy colors, because we thought about that. There are some examples in fashion. There are some examples elsewhere. And this is, this is it. This is the sophistication. How can you play around with classics, but then moving a step forward? So it's modern, not boring. Um, examples of that. So here, the store, like then again, it's this, the shapes, the proportions of colors, of these neutrals, colors, 
um, let's say, colored tones of grays. This is really interesting. Here, this is the sketch. Uh, this is a restaurant in London, and it's uh, Inda Madavi who refurbished it. Um, I'm sure you have just, you heard about it. And this is interesting how she plays with the composition of the four, which is a very traditional herringbone, so to speak. But then again, like playing around with uh, with very interesting colors. Here, I'm sure you know oh, the brand Mutina. It's very inspiration for for me and for the design team. We we love that brand from uh, ceramics and the salty the. Let's say it's very precious. It's very into the details. This is the new uh, Trati from uh, Inga Sampe. She worked uh, on this. And um, Terrazzo is very much present tradition, but then you see how it's possible to play with colors, palette, and render something that's interesting and, and uh, vibrating. There's, I was in Maison um, Yobche earlier this year in September, and I met with these people from Les Petites Gambettes. It's a totally new French design brand, and they're making some furniture, and it's all covered with uh, these terrazzo stories. It's really into this trend now. And the subtlety is also about the compositions. You can be original, you can play with this subtle mix of, of textures, uh, matte and shiny, uh, interesting things. Um, it's always classic, but then yet yeah, contemporary. And you can see that also in the way it's, the assortment is done with the, the different materials. Again, the composition, the balance, the equilibrium, I would say, is extremely important to make it work. Um, yeah. You can see that also in the subtlety of some fabrics. Like, you, you know, you really see the stitching, you really see that it's fabric. And we're actually moving in that direction also on carpets. We really want to find out that textile fabric effect, and that's something flat. And you'll see that on, on the example that, uh, that, that you can see here up top. Uh, examples here, so this is laminate, this is the chevron style. What's interesting about it is that when you think about it, chevron is something that you, well, you need to put some planks next to each other. So what we decided as designers is kind of blend the different little, you know, uh, parquet uh, lamps, uh, 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 planks uh, together in the big plank like of, of laminate. And it really makes it smooth and soft and yet very modern and contemporary, and, and, and kind of like smart as well, I think. Example here of how to marry, uh, this is an ash uh, white, uh, together with some of our rugs from Leso, and this is really interesting how to, to make it uh, tradition again. I mean, if you notice, there's a toile de jouy here on the wall. Uh, it's always very product, it's very, it's a classic. We could be at Repetto right here. The classic is also, whoops. The classic is also about architecture. Art Deco is very much present these days, and this wood uh, is called actually um, Noble Art Deco. And it really speaks about, together with this, uh, this structure of this staircase right here, it's really interesting how it works. Another classic is, of course, the cemental, and the way we played about it was that instead of making two graphic and classic, like the black and white. We play with gray, but each triangle is a different gray. So it makes that tradition modern again, because we're making something that's more dynamic. And this is going to be my last example. This is, again, the Noble Manhattan that I've heard, I've talked to you about. I really love that one. And um, it can be used in many ways. And in, in the classic version, is that how do you make that color speak to the rest, and it totally envelops this, this scenography here uh, with, with, and, and the matching, and all makes it like so clear. There we are playing with the graphic, the straight lines, and make that, it's just like um, states the, the, the scenography of, of this composition here. Um, this was my last slide. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't worry. Not his date, obviously. Shesin? The, the only thing I, I can add compared to with this, so this, this what you saw here, you'll see that in, already in current collections, but you'll see that in the future collections. 
uh, you already see that, like the color palette, you'll see that in mixonomy very strongly. Uh, this, is, this is really interesting how we try to use those studies of how what we observe in the world to build our material, because this is, this is our job as designers to, to work on things. So it has a true concrete use afterwards, even if it's very inspirational and beautiful, but um, 